The Phoenix Suns just won a huge Game 3 last night against the Denver Nuggets to make the series two games to one with them still being on home court and Devin Booker was a huge reason why this man has officially arrived this year in the playoffs. Kevin Durant was very good as well, Mr. Free Throw, or else they would have combined to both score 40 points. The big three is looking good, even though CP3 didn't play last night. DeAndre Ayton got benched in the last few minutes for Jock Landale, but overall, this Suns team looks good. I tried to tell y'all about TJ Warren. He hit some big shots last night to help close it out. Terrence Ross was all right off the bench. Darius basically not really getting the role that I thought he would, but maybe he will next year, or maybe that was just a salary dump. So we're going to be talking all about the Phoenix Suns and their run to the NBA championship this year. So make sure to stick around for the full video. Now let's go ahead and get started. Are they good enough to win it all? Owner, new owner, Matt Sheba, I believe is how you pronounce it, went out. Got the big three some help. Kevin Durant now in Phoenix as well. And this this core is looking good. Now, of course, DeAndre Ayton, we talked about it. We'll talk about him first. He got benched in the last couple of minutes of the game last night, but he has still been good. You see the regular season numbers there. He's been all right in the playoffs. Nothing special, but he's essentially the fourth option on offense. Uh, really just more of a rebounder and a rim protector when it comes to the playoffs, but still very good at what he does. Uh, so he's still good, but Devin Booker, man, 47? You see the regular season numbers, he has really leveled up. He killed the Nuggets all night last night, especially when Jokic was in that drop pick and roll defense. He got out of the paint and he did whatever the heck that he wanted to do. His mid-range game is lethal. He might be the best player on this team right now. Uh, now the biggest move that the Suns could possibly make, possibly the biggest trade at the deadline in franchise history, was sending two of their young promising wings to get a win now, as much of a win now type player as you can get in Kevin Durant, and hey, it's paying off. I mean, he just dropped 40 on the Nuggets last night. I know you had to give up a lot of picks, and the fact that he is 34, I mean, yeah, that's a bit concerning. Um, 2023, 2025, 2027, 2028, and 2029, you don't have your first round picks now because of the KD trade, but you've got D-Book, you've got DeAndre Ayton, CP3, KD. Uh, KD was good last night. I mean, at one point he was 9 for 27 from the field, still had 30 points, but he's still a generational player nonetheless. Uh, he's a guy that you can build your team around. However, they have put him together with Devin Booker to create a duo of two of the best mid-range shooters in the NBA, but hey, they both shoot a dang near 40% from three as well. Potentially the best player ever traded at the deadline. You see the regular season numbers. They are elite. The playoff numbers are elite as well. Between KD and Devin Booker, this Suns team is in a great spot. I feel like going forward, they, they both need to be attacking downhill. They need to be getting into the mid-range uh, against the Joker's drop coverage defense, kind of like what Jimmy Butler did against um, the Milwaukee Bucks with Brooke Lopez. This Suns team, they got to attack uh, the, the Nuggets where Jokic is his weakest. The Suns still also have the point guard, Chris Paul, or the point guard, excuse me, Chris Paul, uh, who although he was injured last night, did not play, he's still, at his old age, put up a good stat line this season, and he's still been all right so far in the playoffs. I mean, it might say a little something that the Suns were able to win the only game they've won this series without him. Maybe not, though. Uh, he's still... You know, the guy uh, we saw when it was crunch time, the ball was still in his hands in games one and two. Uh, however, it was in KD and uh, D-Book's hands last night. So maybe that's just need what they need to rock with going forward. The bench revamp at the deadline was, I thought it was good. Terrence Ross has been kind of, he's been back and forth so far this year in the NBA playoffs. Some good moments, some bad moments. Of course, the buyout from the Magic. I thought he would come in and instantly be a great microwave guy off the bench for the Suns. And some nights he has been, other nights he has not been. TJ Warren is a guy that rarely got to play for the Suns before last night, but then all of a sudden he was out there in crunch time and he scored five big points in the last three minutes of that game, including a 
lean in jumper i'm not exactly sure what it was but it went down tj warren has always been a bucket i think he can really help the suns team if they're going to make a run to the nba championship and then darius Baisley, brought over from the oklahoma city thunder has not really seen any impactful minutes i thought maybe they would try and develop him you know they brought him in with the sarge swap but maybe that was just more of a contract dump uh, he's got good efficiency numbers but he has not played thus far for the Phoenix Suns. Now, the lineups for the Suns, I, I just like to talk about this. Uh, we talk about it with the Nuggets as to who is stopping this team. Right now, we've got two of the best offenses in the NBA just trying to outscore each other. Of course, they've still got Torrey Craig there at the four. Sometimes Josh Okogie starts, but Chris Paul, D Book, KD, DeAndre Ayton. That big four is is tough to stop. You got two almost 30 point per game scores with D Book, Kevin Durant, two of the best mid range artists we've got in the game right now. By the way, they also shoot at 40% from three almost. Like I said, Chris Paul, one of the best floor generals the game has ever seen. He's still doing it even at age 36. DeAndre Ayton protecting the rim a little bit. He's not the best rim protector in the world, but he can control the paint, get all the rebounds. And then Torrey Craig as the glue guy and the best defender or best perimeter defender probably at the four the bench this is what i thought the bench would look like with um darius basley but it turns out jock lando has actually replaced him at that backup five you've got campaign who started last night campaign has just been so good for phoenix over the years and then landry shamit who has a habit of throwing the ball to the other team in clutch time and then tj warren at the four this bench i think is good enough especially when you see Jock Lando in there at the five, um, who gave him good minutes. He closed the game out last night for him against the Joker. Uh, campaign is an elite backup point guard. Like I said, I really like Terrence Ross in that microwave role off the bench. And then I just think TJ Warren needs to be getting more minutes. I've been an advocate for him all year long. And then you see what he does last night in crunch time. Bismack Biombo is another guy. He's got some playoff experience. Sometimes he just likes to turn into prime, uh, prime shack down in the paint. You know, he turns it on for a series and then it's gone for a few years, but he does have the potential to do that. We've seen it in the past. The outlook for this Suns team. This is a team that I think their window is now to win the NBA championship. They've got a huge game four upcoming in Phoenix. If they can win that one, swing the momentum back to their side, going back to Denver and then maybe steal a game, I think that'd be huge. Obviously, you're hoping Chris Paul comes back. For, I believe a groin injury. He's out and definitely have not heard an update on his timeline. Uh, the West is wide open though. If you can beat the Nuggets, you've got the six and the seven seeds battling it out down in the bottom portion of the bracket. So the West is wide open. Um, right now, this will be your toughest competition that you've got to face the rest of the way. Uh, small window though for the Suns. As we mentioned, Chris Paul at 36 years old. Not getting any younger and continues to battle injuries. I'm not much. I'm not sure how much longer he will be playing, to be honest. And then Kevin Durant is not young by any means either. Um, getting up there in age, I believe he is 34, going on 35. Could already be 35 actually. But they got a couple of aging superstars. It's really gonna fall onto the shoulders of D Book and DeAndre Ayton in three or four years after they retire. You wonder how much Matt Sheba will regret trading McCall Bridges and Cam Johnson. But if they win an NBA championship this year, no regrets. You get a championship, that's all that matters. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button and leave me a comment down below as it really helps out in the YouTube algorithm. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video.